United States Olympic Committee Training Design Symposium 2007. This is a lecture by Michael Shanning about evaluating and monitoring of training. His original lecture was an hour and 43 minutes. This is audio notes, which will be a little bit less than that. How well do we monitor training? Fitness follows a dose-response model, that is, fitness and fatigue. If no variation in training, no need to monitor. If best, most talented athletes recruited, maybe less important for monitoring as well. Everyone needs to monitor recovery. Monitoring is not new. Periodization, preparation, competitive season, transition. Those are uh, what some people call the three phases of periodization, preparation, competitive season, and transition. And periodization comes from Philostratus in his manual of gymnastics program in the third century. So the question was monitoring is not new and essentially periodization is a monitoring model. Monitoring will detect small changes that might be overlooked, ensures progress, monitoring could equal a business plan, and a business plan equals a training program. Monitoring is also an insurance policy for the business plan. How well are we monitoring? Greater than 60% report they have experienced overtraining some point in their career. There is no owner's manual for each athlete Hence, the idea he's promoting for monitoring and or periodization plans. What are benefits of monitoring? Identifies weaknesses, measures improvement, reduces or eliminates overtraining, puts athletes in right group. Can capacities change? Yes, and this is the major reason for monitoring. Coach-athlete communication. What we think is going on versus what is actually going on. And the idea there is if there is good athlete-coach communication, uh, there may not be any need for monitoring at all. And because the absence of that sometimes does exist, there is an, an, a need for monitoring. Monitoring tools. RPE, or rate of perceived exertion. Heart rate. Blood lactate. Performance. Process versus outcome. Monitoring should measure process. What's truly going on? Process dictates outcome. Opinion or fill is most used method. 30% couldn't detect change in own lactate or power. Or they could not detect changes in their power or their lactate threshold. And those mentioned, those tools that I mentioned prior to this actually do measure power and lactate threshold. Again, those were RPE, rate of perceived exertion, heart rate, blood lactate, performance, maybe it doesn't measure necessarily power or lactate threshold, process versus outcome, that also does not measure power or lactate threshold. But RPE, our heart rate, and blood lactate actually do. Perception. RPE, or rate of perceived exertion, was designed by 
by Borg, who was a Swedish psychologist. 90% athletes use feel as uh, monitoring their way they feel in terms of being overexerted or not. Factors to consider. Mood, fatigue, environment. RPE standardizes feelings so the athletes don't necessarily have to use uh, their feel meter or feel measure because the factors that you have to consider when using feel or you know how someone's actually feeling depends on their mood if they already are tired and or the environment they're in maybe it's indoors or outdoors maybe it's raining maybe the wind is blowing and that sometimes has an effect on how people feel which could uh, determine their you know how they're determined what they're feeling like which is going to impact how they actually uh, perceive things so the idea behind the rate of perceived exertion it standardizes the feelings because it's uh, basically like a, a test some athletes do not feel difference between workloads and that would be another reason why uh, RPE would be a better standardized measure RPE is very effective for identifying lactate threshold 0 to 10 on an RPE scale is easier to read versus 6 through 20, which is really confusing for many. If you look up RPE, sometimes you'll notice how it says 6 through 20, and you can actually modify it so it's 0 through 10, which is easy to read. Juniors, males may underrate intensity. Females tend to overrate intensity on those specific rate of perceived exertion measures. So know your athletes and communicate, which is one of the very first things he said with regard to uh, monitoring periodization and understanding how athletes are doing and feeling. Communication is a big part of it. Heart rate. Non-invasive. Heart rate is really not linear. Likely only in the beginning of training. Sprints or explosive training. Effects steady state. Heart rate is affected by health, hydration, heat, cold, etc. Body drives the heart rate. Heart rate response to training. Variables are nerves, stress, hormones, and the training itself. How long does it take to get to steady state? 5 to 20 minutes. Steady state is used to measure heart rate. Heart rate can be used to measure training intensity. Orthostatic heart rate test from lying down to 10 minutes to standing up. After 2 minutes, measure again. Blood lactate reflects change in physiology. Used to classify training intensity. Use when changes are expected. So that will determine the training zones when you test the blood lactate. Training zones can be determined by above measures. Many athletes train hard when they should train easy and train easy when they should train hard. Training zones help eliminate confusion. Lactic acid comes from sugar. Doesn't cause soreness nor cramps used rapidly for fuel during exercise and recovery, doesn't remain in muscles long, delayed onset muscle soreness comes from muscle damage and inflammation, most cramps stem from overexcitability after fatigue, increased intensity, increased fast twitch muscle fiber usage, increased intensity power, increased fast twitch fibers, fast twitch fibers use many carbs to fuel Contractions, breakdown of carbs for energy produces lactic acid. Increase in blood lactate equals rate of production exceeds rate of removal. Oxygen has little to do with CO2 or oxygen has little to do with it. CO2 is about 21% at or above sea level. Used and produced by tissues and used for energy. Energy source for body. Lactate can be cleared within 20 minutes with active recovery. So that last, I guess, information piece there was just to give you some basics of lactic acid. Probably listen to it again so you can understand it better. A lot of people 
aren't necessarily certain where it comes from, what it's derived from, how it can be used, and that was a description of it. Blood lactate threshold used to determine training zones and intensities. Training zones. Zone 1, recovery. Zone 2, below lactate threshold. Zone 3, at blood lactate threshold. Typical interval equals 15 to 45 minutes. Zone 4, interval training, well above lactate threshold. VO2 max training test, typical intervals, 3 to 5 minutes. Zone 5, high intensity training, 30 to 45 seconds. Max, very short interval training. Wingate test, total 30 seconds, 10.5 minute average, 95% average power. 400 is different than 500 watts. 400 watts is different than 500 watts. So that last explanation again there was giving you the training zones and the amount of time that it would take to reach those training zones and or the amount of uh, time it takes for that training zone to be derived. So training zone 1 is going to be completely different than training zone 5 because the body can only produce certain levels of intensities for certain amounts of times. In other words, shorter duration intensities are uh, they're going to be the highest and they're going to be the shortest amount of time. Longer duration int intensities, they can be sustained for a longer time because they are, uh, you know, not the same intensity as high intensity training. Does that make sense? So when you have a, a lower intensity, you can do it for a longer time. When you have a higher intensity, you can do that for a shorter time. In terms of actually wrestling and doing training designs, putting together training designs, I think that last discussion is very important because when we have a better understanding of training design, we can, or and or training zones within the training design, we can put together programs that simulate our wrestling matches. Uh, in other words, a wrestling match may be several high intensity training blocks of 30 to 45 seconds put together back to back to back to back to back. And it may not necessarily be like running a marathon. So you probably listen to that again, those training zones, and you can have a better understanding of that last description I just gave. Other monitoring considerations. Environment. Illness. General stress response. Exercise mode and or type. A lot of uh, monitoring considerations to have to deal with being inside or outside, raining or snowing, if the athlete is sick or not. Uh, the athlete's ability to have stress and deal with stress and the type of exercise that you're doing. I just gave you a repeat of what I said, but to make it more clear, when you're monitoring things, there, you have to put all those into consideration because each athlete is going to actually be different and the environment, if the environment is different, you're going to get a different response. Monitoring training sport groups. Select what monitoring you need based on sport. Recording versus journaling. Training records detail what you did to attain or not attain goals. Journaling may be storytelling or narrative about whole life. Recording what you're doing, in essence, the practices and how you felt and how long the practice was, what intensities were, uh, is akin to being able to monitor what you're doing versus a narrative and or telling a story about your whole life. Training log, four parts, and training log could also be considered recording uh, the training response. Number one, general information. Number two, training performed daily. Number three, subjective responses. Number four, recovery measurement, heart rate, sleep, psychological. Training log catches what happens. Total quality of recovery. Standardized training response. This is in a book by Kelman. You can probably Google Kelman and then type in total quality of recovery and you may be able to get that information. Insurance policy. Some people don't like to buy insurance policies. Monitoring training is an insurance policy that details, describes, process to catch what happens. How do you know if the program is working? Reason for monitoring. Many factors affect performance. Evaluating training may be easier if you monitor the training. Training load.
equals volume times intensity. Volume equals miles, kilometers, minutes, hours. Intensity equals percent of rate of perceived exertion, heart rate, blood lactate. There's a range of intensity for any given volume. And again, that's the explanation I was given about the zones. So the shorter uh, the, the duration, the higher the intensity, the longer the duration is going to be, uh, the intensity is actually going to go down because your body just can't produce that much energy to sustain the much longer go. We all speak a different language. Cyclists, swimmers, wrestlers, etc. all describe training volume, load, etc. differently. Training zones may help to standardize all sports or your teams or different teams. Surveys. Communication tools to get athlete and coach on the same page. Calculating training loads. RPE or rate of perceived exertion. TRIMPS. You can Google TRIMPS and you can see what that is. Heart rate zone method. Volume load method. And Carl Foster's adapted RPE. Again, a lot of the stuff I'm saying, if you Google certain words or certain names, it'll you'll be able to see the information more clearly and understand a little bit better. Rest. If calculated and above, very difficult to evaluate. Rest weighs a lot. Coaches can use above to test training in beginning. And I guess just to sum up everything, I would listen to this several times. I actually spent about seven years watching these videos endlessly until I thought I had a really good grasp of them and then I actually put them into audio notes so you could get an overview of the actual information. Uh, there's a lot that I mentioned up there. The bottom line is if we are able to understand how to monitor and use specific tools to monitor and we have a periodized training plan, we will be able to then detect and predict how the athletes are going to feel based on what we've actually monitored in before. So I would, again, listen to this again and then, you know, try to listen to it again. And then if there's something that you don't understand, you can always uh, shoot me an email actually at coachshannon at gmail.com.